Okay, in this lesson we're going to go over materials and actually texture in our objects. Um, first thing first, I'm going to make a cube here. Just a simple cube. And we can see it's actually shaded already for us. What the Maya does is actually automatically place a shader on top of our object. And it's called a Lambert. If you go to the Attribute Editor, it's under Lambert 1. Now you can't change the name, but you can actually change the attributes of this. So I can go in here and click the color, change the color. But you'll notice anytime I make a new object or anything, it will be the exact same color I've set that Lambert to. So that's something that we don't want to do. So what? how do we get a new material on this? Well, what I do is, and I think it's the best way of doing it, is holding the right click down, I can select all the faces. Once all the faces are selected that I want, I can hold right click down again and I can go to assign favorite material. Now the two that we'll be using are Fong or Lambert. Lambert's made for matte objects that don't shine and Fong is made for objects that do shine. So I'm just going to click on Fong here. And you'll see my attributes. It's opened up the Fong shader for me. And what I actually have is a small ball here showing me what my material is actually going to look like. It's kind of like a preview giving you a small idea before you render it out. It might take a lot. So in the attributes I can change multiple things. I can change the color. Pretty simple. I can change the transparency. So it's see-through. You can see it's absolutely see-through there. Ambient color and incandescent I wouldn't use. Um, they're not really used that much, so I wouldn't go near them. You can add bump maps, something we'll go over later on. And we can actually go down and change the shininess of the object by changing the cosine power. So I can make that really shiny, or I can make it less shiny. There's also reflection. So the higher that is, the more reflective it is. Put that up. And we've also got something called special effects in here. I can actually make my object glow. So if I press that up, you'll see in the preview that it actually doesn't glow. But if I hit this small render button up here, it'll render out. You can see my glow is actually starting to appear on the object. You can put that up full whack. And it's glowing a lot more. Okay, so how do we add textures to this? So that was that adding materials, now we want to add a texture into that material. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to select the top polygon here, just clicked on it, and I'm going to go down to my file. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to change this to bricks. It's very important that you name your materials otherwise they may get lost if you want to reuse them again. And under bricks I'm going to change the color. Now the texture I'm going to use is just a color texture so I can connect that texture by clicking this box here at the side. It's a JPEG file so I can use file here. If it was a PSD file I would choose PSD. So I'm just going to choose file. I'm just going to scroll down to my image name here. Click on this folder and now this is where I'm going to search for my texture. So once you've found your texture, just select it, open it up, and you'll see nothing actually appears here. But if I click the texture ball here at the top, you'll see my image is actually textured pretty well. But one thing you'll notice is the bricks are really big in it, and it's not actually covering the whole image that I imported in. If I go to my texture uh, mapping view, you can see that that cube is representative of what's being textured on this here plane. So it's only texturing a small area of that whole texture. Now I wanted to use most of it, if not all. And the way you can do that is, and it's very important that we do this, is once we have our cube selected and our face on that cube selected, we go to create UVs and we use planar mapping. We always use planar mapping for flat side surfaces like floors, walls, or ceilings. 
And I'm just going to go into the options of that by clicking on the box beside it. I'm going to make sure best plane is selected and keep image with height ratio is also selected. And then I'm going to press project. Now you can see that it's using all of that image and it's giving me a far crisper texture on there. Now the next thing that we can do is we can go back to our uh, bricks shader and we can go down to bump mapping and we can click on that. Click on file. Now bump mapping interacts with lights and it makes an object or a texture look like it's got bumps on it. So once I select bump map, I'm going to go to my bump value and click on the arrow. Click on the folder and I'm going to click on my bump map. Later on I'll show you how to make bump maps through a program called Crazy Bump. So once I've got that, I'm just going to open it up. But nothing's really happened. If I click on this high quality view, you can see that it's added small bumps onto my object. So that's how you add a material to your object and that's how you add a texture to that material and project it properly on to the side of a polygon.